A pretty substantial thread has been growing over on Intel's official forum concerning issues with the Intel 7700K having spikes in temps. Everyone seems to be up in arms over Intel's response, so let's discuss. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. While this was originally found and posted by the register.co.uk, I headed over to the original thread to figure out what was going on. It was started by the user BC93Key, who had been having some issues with their 7700K CPU spiking in temps during minor tasks. We're talking 25 degree spikes when doing something as trivial as opening a folder. Some even claim their temps got as high as 90 degrees Celsius. Obviously, these are pretty substantial temperature jumps, and the user, rightfully so, was alarmed. This was actually posted on January 30th of this year and has since gotten 612 replies as of this writing, with many who are having the same issue as well as seeing 100% load during similar minute operations. So what was Intel's response? I won't read the whole thing, but I'll point out a couple areas. In the first paragraph we have, quote, the reported behavior of the 7th generation Intel Core i7 7700K processor showing momentary temperature changes with the idle temperature is normal while completing a task like opening a browser or an application or a program. Okay, so people are a little upset and I don't really blame them, especially since Intel originally stated it's not normal. But here's the thing, definitely keep in mind that the original rep probably doesn't understand the intricacies of the CPU. But what is going on? Is it normal? Well. Kind of, but unfortunately it's not being conveyed that well. Luckily a moderator from Tom's Hardware gave some pretty decent insight into it. It all boils down to a feature started in Intel Skylake CPUs and has been updated for Kaby Lake. It's called Speed Shift and quite a few people have done some tests on the feature like PC Per. Basically, it moves control of the P state from the OS to the CPU. This means it's able to make frequency changes in response to task requests much faster. Basically, it can do things like open programs much faster from idle. So why the huge jump in heat? Well, such a quick jump in frequency translates to higher temps, but when it takes the frequency back down, those temps dip as well. This actually explains exactly why something as small as opening a browser can change the temp, but jumping for that one process. But of course, there have always been spikes in CPU temps. But another reason for seeing it recently are that the thermal sensors for the CPU temps is also incredibly snappy now. Unfortunately, this does actually cause issues with the fan ramping up and down which many in the forums are complaining about that should have been addressed but it was not. Another reason presented is the TIM used on the CPU which of course has been a place of contention for Intel for quite some time. One thing I do think was foolish was that they stated in the last paragraph and it's the thing most people have contention towards anyway. They essentially suggested for users to not overclock or delid their CPUs. Now I fully understand emphasis against deliding, but I can't get behind the suggestion of not overclocking. For one, many of the posters didn't have overclock CPUs, so why even mention it? Second is the 7700K. Emphasis on the K as they're specifically sold with unlock multipliers for manual overclocking. The main point I think is the fact that most who had the issue weren't even overclocking. I do get why manual overclocking voids the warranty, which they did discuss. I mean, they don't guarantee any kind of overclock, and if you don't know what you're doing, user error can cause unnecessary death of the CPU. But to suggest not to, when that's the reason the K models even exist, seems absurd in my opinion. Of course, if they didn't allow overclocking, people would be upset and allowing everyone to do it could cause too much RMA issues, though AMD does do it, I will say. I don't know. It can seem to be one of those screwed either way scenarios. I just think this was handled quite poorly. This is the time in the episode where I ask what you think. Was it the right call or are you aggravated with the company? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming and as always, have a great day.